What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Fade to Black podcast, hosted by OMG Studios Philly. In preparation for it's the Fade to Black, it's a Black Film Festival 2022. Today, we're watching Into the Spider-Verse. In your universe, there's only one Spider-Man. But there is another universe. It looks and sounds like yours, but it's not. My name's Miles Morales. Hey, kid. You're like me. How? Yeah! Hello, and welcome to the Fate to Black podcast, hosted by OMG Studios in preparations for Fate to Black. It's a blackity black film festival. We watch Spider Verse, and your boy is a um, Spider Man um, simp, is what I would call myself. I remember when Miles Morales was announced as a character in like 2010 or 11, um, and there was that first picture of him pulling his mask up, and it was a huge, 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 huge deal. I remember going to like the 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 Midtown Comics store and like getting a bunch of the like the early issues of Miles and like learning all about that. So also in regards to the animated Spider-Man movie, I remember when that was announced and there was no mention of Miles. They just said an animated Spider-Man movie is going to come out. And I was still in high school when that was announced. It was, I was, I was my senior year, 2015 or something like that. And I was like, oh, well, they're going to make an animated Spider-Man movie. That's pretty cool. Um, so now we're here. It's already made its cultural fucking presence so much so that they made a fucking another one the white version that we all love um <laughs> no way home <laughs> it's not the white version but it's just funny to call it that guys why did i bring this besides well okay obviously i'm a fucking fan but besides me being a spider-man simp again spider-man simp why did I bring this? Why are we watching this today? For the Fade to Black podcast hosted by OMG Studios in preparations for Fade to Black. It's a blackity black film festival. <laughs> Philly film festival, excuse me. If I am to go first, um, <laughs> my guess would be to say, um, A, because it is Spidey, um, that is the first reason, and first and foremost because spider-man is a dope ass character just a dude who got bit by a spider that like bit into our hearts um and hooked us all from the very jump and to like see him now grow into a universe where like more faces can like latch on to spider-man like black kids and then like afro latinx kids um it's like i don't know representations is part of reparations in my book and uh just by this existing um it's creating like so many new imaginations and portals for like black futures so that's my guess you know uh we only have so many black superhero movies um and i feel like that last pick that you had we watched a black vampire movie which we don't really have many of so this was like you know black superhero movie that's not black panther but shout out to black panther Shout out um, to Black Panther. You know, R.I.P. R.I.P. R. My man. R.I.P. Chadwick. You know Saint Chadwick in the black box, but yeah, nah, it's, it's dope. It's a dope. Um, yeah, hard to say talk about this, but like not bring in the fact that it is Spider Man. <laughs> um, it is you know representation for sure. Um, the animation is just wild there's just so much detail that goes into it which um i'm sure we can go into later um yeah dog it's miles dealing with some real shit you know trying to get with the shits and like everybody leaving him behind not believing in him but he also feeling alone in this new world it's wild it's, it's a great film and uh i have watched this movie so many times and every time i watch it i always pick up something new but uh yep yeah i think um 
I don't know. I just remember when I first saw it and see, going to the theater and seeing a bunch of black children in Spider-Man costumes and, like, also, like, just he looks like what I looks like at that age. Like, that's and I, if I was 14 seeing that, I would have freaked out. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I agree with what you said, Sonny, that, like, representation can be, like, reparations. Um I do think sometimes they try to play us with representation sometimes, but like this was like, I don't know. It just, it was subtle and it wasn't like in your face. It was like, I don't know. Miles was a character and like he was black, but the blackness wasn't like essential to his like story. Um, But the undertones of him being black were there. And I don't know. They actually, and I also just someone who's read the movie. Huh? I'm sorry? Yeah. It's like a casual black movie, just like a soul. Like, you know, there's nothing no nothing traumatic going on. It's just they write them just like a character, just a normal character. It's not like, this is a black character. And it's black as fuck. You're like, black, black, black. Yeah. It's like, this is Miles. This is a kid. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, they really make the him a kid. And like, yeah, yeah, you know? He's a true kid, and he got held, handed, like, a heavy hand. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where I'm going with that point. Anyway. I mean, I think there is something to, like, uh, mm-hmm. seeing black superheroes and thinking of the idea of um, Miles being someone that's, like, living a double life, feeling like he has to take care of everybody, take care of everything, and uh, opening up with the Spideyverse, like, he has help. There's, like, <laughs> assistance, like, somebody to introduce him into this role and into this power that he has to step into. Um, and it feels like human it feels black like th- that those lessons don't necessarily always come from your family um so mm-hmm. i don't know th- i guess there is something to like connecting a black experience to like a super experience um and just thinking of like the weight of the world and like all of the problems that you are in, in, uh, essentially inheriting um that you didn't have the knowledge that you were even living in this world or like how to navigate it and now it's like <laughs> well here's some tools you know so yeah. Maybe that was a ramble, but I hope it was helpful. No. I, yeah. I liked that Anyone analogy. too, Peter, I mean, like, uh, Miles, too, like, does have this, like, double world that he's living in just because he goes to that whole different yeah. school. Um, and it is, like, away from his actual neighborhood. So it's like yeah. uh, he is, like, existing in these two these two worlds already, and then you add that layer of Spider-Man to it, and it's like... Ah, I have another. I have another identity. It's like all this code switching. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. Also, being a biracial individual. Yeah, I too. like that. Yeah, that he is like constantly code switching and like. Yeah. I also think that like the most, <laughs> his like the relationship between him and his uncle feels like the most genuine. I want to. I don't want to say the blackest, but like that feels the most genuine out of, yeah. like between him, his mom, and his dad. Like, I don't know. It yeah, seems I mean, like no, like rules whenever he's with his uncle like you know yeah it's uncle aaron like i fuck with you uncle aaron you cool like you let me spray paint you let me do what i actually want to do um and like you know then as opposed to his dad which he's like you know you got rules is you're my son you're not somebody Mm -hmm. that just visits me and i'm like yeah sure whatever until i gotta Mm -hmm. go you're my son so like we do have rules so like i see what you mean it's not like the more black or him it's just this is me when I'm relaxed. This is how I'm probably am when I'm with my friends or like my real good homies or some shit. But uh, yeah, yeah, the code switching thing is really is a really good point. Um, I was just gonna say I think like uh, also to add to the animation style, um, the fact that like we can layer up and just like add captions along and express things that like might not necessarily be verbal. Um, I feel like that leans into like a black experience as well um and so something about hmm just watching these folks try to like tackle like all of the things but maybe not at once and uh like visually being able to like communicate something that you can't necessarily just speak through the plot line all the time feels interesting uh to like even just like look at the different facades of spider-man and all the different people that they could be um 
in all of their different animation styles feels uh, like a good way to say that Spider-Man can be anybody and anybody can see themselves into Spider-Man. Um, it feels like a way to release also some of that pressure to try to tell like a black Spider-Man story um, because it's like this Spider-Man story um, in this universe and like it's open for so many other interpretations too. So um, that feels exciting and uh, like it was present in the writing as well. Yeah, because it's like too you don't it's like making Peter Park making Peter Parker black is like easy. Um and it also you're just not doing anyone any type of service. Uh because like it's more than just like making a white character black. Like it are these it is like these little nuances of like uh, you know, how they would move. Like, you know, Miles has rhythm. Um <laughs> and how they would move and how they speak and react his life, the fact that he comes from like a multicultural household, um, you know, like you can't do that with Peter Parker. Like people already know Aunt May and Uncle Ben. Like why don't force a multicultural Uncle Aunt May and Uncle Ben, just make a whole new family, make a new people. And like Spider-Man, like uh, Sonny was saying, this story like Spider-Man can be anybody, like really allows for that to like, nah, like make a new character and give them this like vibrant backstory. Uh, to go off of and so even the even though there were like creators on this team that were white um, there were still black people in the room mm -hmm. you know and it seems like it was a room where they kept their ears open uh, and you know was down to make sure that they were just making an honest character um, and that like Miles's blackness is not the center of his existence and what he does but it does have effect on how he lives. Yeah, like even I'm thinking about in the very beginning, they show like a flash of different Spider-Mans and you get one that is just like a picture of that melted popsicle with the the gumball eyeballs. And I'm like, <laughs> that is a black Spider-Man right there because I know exactly where <laughs> this came from. You know? so, um, it's just like something, yeah, anybody can see themselves in anything. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, that's also a huge, like, I think... No, I think Stanley is also mentioned like that's a huge part of like why he likes the design that Steve Ditko did of Spider-Man because like you can see yourself under the mask. He's, he explicitly said like you could be black, Asian, whatever, and imagine yourself as Spider-Man. Damn. Yeah, this is definitely like, uh, I'll give it top two superhero movies of all time. Honestly, I would. I think. I think I would put it number one for me, just because it is an easy watch as well. And it um, is. like for me to watch the Dark Knight, I gotta. I gotta be fucking ready. I gotta be like, yo, <laughs> let's get some food going. Let's you know get the blunts going. You know, like <laughs> but like for this, I'm like, yo, y'all wanna y'all watching this? It could be on FX. And I'm gonna stop there and finish the movie up because I really do love this movie and like. Just the amount of detail that they put in is just as satisfying to me as like watching The Dark Knight because that's a movie as well that I watch and like every time I watch it I'm like, damn, that's something new I picked up. But like with this, there's always something, some small detail like the detail of like Spider Man starting out at a slower frame rate, uh, Miles starting out as Spider Man whenever he is in his suit is swinging at a slower frame rate than uh, Peter is. But then when he's finally got all his powers and gets his shit together in the final act, like he's moving at the same frame rate as everybody else because he is a confident Spider-Man. That is one of my favorite little like attention to details that they do in this movie. And like, there's just so much more. Uh, it's visually amazing. I do love the, however they did it. It's just great. The next one, every dimension is going to be a new, a different animation style. So I'm just really excited to see how that's going to go. Um, yeah, this is definitely my favorite superhero movie and easily the best Spider-Man movie. Or have you seen that meme? Have you seen that meme that was like them little boys that them little kids that like Spider-Man bad as fuck, <laughs> bad as hell, <laughs> little bastards. <laughs> I haven't seen that, but that's that's funny because <laughs> this is true. Kids that love Spider Man Maybe be jumping off of everything, breaking them, <laughs> just yeah, breaking everything. I'm <laughs> Miles. They Spider Man, yeah. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I think another thing this movie does really well is like the core Spider Man is like it's emotional. Like Spider Man is a very emotional story, and they like. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like everybody was like talking about how they were like about to cry in this movie, and in the Miles Morales yeah. video game, I was crying. Like the fuck. Um, oh yeah, yeah I, that video game is wild. <laughs> I yeah, I I I just the bit the thing for me is like they kept they changed the character and to make him not Peter Parker in a way that was genuine. But the the core was still Spider Man. Spider Man's story was still tragic. Lost his uncle. Literally lost his uncle and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but like, and also like the not giving up thing. I love the not giving up. I love that that's being like a tr- uh, like a big trait for Spider Man. Like in the movies, that he's like never backs down thing. I think in like the wiki Marvel wiki, one of his powers is endurance. Oh. <laughs> corny, corny. Tomato, tomato, like tomato. Huh? I said I love that. <laughs> um, who would we like to play Miles Morales? That's not Donald Glover? That's not nice David world. Dunnington. <laughs> I want a young um, Miles. Like, I want a... Teenage Miles, baby, baby boy, like a Miles that we could grow with. Yeah, uh, what about like Miles. from Blackish? It's cool. Yeah, yeah, Jack from Blackish. Uh, I think that's what yeah, everybody, a lot of people uh, say. Yeah, I think a lot of people. Vampire versus the Bronx. Has everyone seen that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that thing would be because... perfect because he's also bilingual. Oh, that's true. Um. I wish we could find uh, some darker niggas, but you know, you get what you can. I really, I, I would really want them to pick I somebody. Who, I would really want them to pick somebody who's like a no name, like a yeah, new face. Because yeah, yes. I just, I know they're thinking about it. I, I'm, I'm really curious if they're because they, they keep, they keep poking at it in the in the live action movies, like and Spider yeah, and like, Spider Man Homecoming. They re- Donald Glover references that because his character is Uncle Aaron. And uh, yeah. he uh, he references like, yeah, I got a I got a nephew over there. I don't want weapons like that over there. And you're like, oh. And then the whole Jamie Fox thing where he's like, oh, there's a black Spider Man out there somewhere. Also, when I saw No Way Home, and he said that that crowd lit the fuck up. Yeah, our crowd was wilding too. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and also, yeah, I think even just like aside from being like, not that this matters, but like. It is really, like, black people, it's really good for the culture, but also just, like, it's a dope-ass superhero Spider-Man movie. So it just feels great, and it's really awesome that, like, one of the best superhero movies, best Spider-Man movies of all time, and best, just, like, it's it's black. It's a black superhero, and I love it, and and I'll never be not happy about it. Um, Shout out to black superhero movies. Shout out to black superhero movies, and let them not stop ever. We love black superheroes. Um, I just keep them coming. Uh, big shout out to Brian Michael Bendis and Sarah Pacelli. They are the creators of Miles. Shout out! Shout out! Shout out! Shout out! <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about this movie. It's like you know, you could. It's kind of. <sighs> This movie's so loved that it's hard to say, like, a lot of new things about it, but it just, like, I don't know. It warms our hearts. You, you probably yes. already seen it. You don't need a new... You, you don't... you don't If you haven't seen it, what the fuck? What are you doing? I mean, this was only my second time watching it. Well, yeah, but you've you still seen it before. You right. Yeah. <laughs> um... I don't know how. What are, what are our final closing thoughts? What's a what's a what's a what's your thesis statement about this film? In terms of blackness, give me an argument. Give me a closing statement. Blackness, Spider Verse, into the Spider Black Verse. Uh, Dear Miles young is the black best. children. Yeah, that was a good one. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, dog, you got it. <laughs> you got it. All right. Dear young black children, if you ever thought 
that you could be a superhero? You can. All you have to do is take life into your own hands. Listen to the guidance of those around you and step forth, leap, swing. You are Spidey. Maya Angelou on Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I got caught up in a Maya poem. <laughs> Just like swing, child. <laughs> swing, child. Go for Next. it. Let the webs rise from your wrist. <laughs> like a spider, I leap. And endure. <laughs> like the webs, I stick <laughs> to my purpose. I endure. <laughs> yes. D- Dominique. Um, shout out to Miles. He's the the best iteration of Spider Man. You know, turning Ooh. invisible. You still got the web. You still got the Spidey sense. You still got the electricity. Uh, he'll beat Petey's ass if it comes to it. Um, they should do a fucking story arc about that. I um, want to see grown up Miles. Yeah, I would love to this. see. I would love to see grown up Miles beat the shit out of Peter Parker. For sure, it should come <laughs> you don't down. Think to they'd be that. homies. Uh, huh? They are homies, but I'm like, you know, you need to make an arc where that nigga just, you know, like Superman going evil. You need to make an arc where Peter is just like, fuck it. Like, bring back Superior Spider-Man and make Doc Ock take over Peter and then have Miles beat the fuck out of him. Anyways, <laughs> shout out to Miles. Shout out to Into the Spider-Verse. Um, great black film. I wish I had it while I was a kid, but even still, it was great as an adult. And... Uh, can't wait for the next one. And uh, yeah, I would say Spider Man, you know, shows little black children they can be superheroes without being exceptional. Like, you don't got to be a prince of Wakanda and you don't have to be a billionaire. Like, you can be your friendly neighborhood Spider Man. Like, it can be you. Yeah. Shout out to Miles Morales. Shout out to Here Miles you Morales. Have all your shit together. Shout out to Miles Morales. Also, I th- it's a good point, just going off of that, that, like, they show that he's really being himself, and, like, he's forced, even though he's pushed to do these other things, he's really good when he's doing the thing that, like, makes him happy. So, like, when yeah. he gets to paint the suit himself, he he yeah. really is, like, that is him. Um, That's such a nice touch. Yeah. yeah. Heartwarming. Ugh. Heartwarming as fuck. <laughs> um yeah that's it that was it that's our thoughts on spider-man uh next we're gonna be talking about what we what are we talking about next week next lemon. podcast lemon Whew, i get it how i live it wait lemon. a minute <laughs> uh, all right that was Watch spider-verse this was the Fade to Black podcast hosted by OMG Studios in preparations for Fade to Black is a Black Philly Film Festival. My name is David hey. Dunnington. Wow, that was beautiful. My name is David Dunnington. I'm with Sonny B. Rose, Imani Johnson, Dominique Barlow. Sure. Guys, do, 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 do you got, what, what do you got going on? Tell us, tell us what the audience needs to hear before we go. Buy them tickets to Fade to Black if you haven't already. Like you don't wanna, you don't wanna miss it. You don't wanna miss it. You wanna be there, whether it's in person or online. You would like to be present. I promise. Where are these tickets? Omg Studios Philly dot com slash Fade dash two dash Black. Omg Studios Philly. Heard, heard. After you buy those tickets. Take your dusty ass over to go see Choir Boy. After you see that amazing show, go upstairs and go see some art by me and the lovely Sunny. It's beautiful. Where's Choir Boy? It's over at the Philadelphia Theater Company, uh, hosted by the Susan Roberts uh, Theater. Um, In Philadelphia. On Broad Street. And how long can people see that work? they don't announce at the end of Choir Boy that you should go upstairs, beat their ass. Yeah, they said they was gonna do it at top of show every day. <laughs> it's called self transitions and reflections. 
if you don't hear that come out of somebody's mouth when they tell you to keep your mask on and turn your cell phones off, tell them to report back to Linda. <laughs> word, word. That's right. That's right. It's it's that's, running that's really soon though. I don't know the exact dates of the run, but it's I mean this episode is supposed to drop like it and ends in March. So just just again, this is a yeah. show where where is this and what is it again? Just one clear cut of it. Yeah. Oh, it's an uh, art show. <laughs> so go ahead, go ahead. somebody. Okay. <laughs> it is <laughs> It is called Choir Boy. Um it will be at <laughs> the at Philadelphia Theater Company located at the Susan Roberts Theater on Broad Street located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I am unsure of the run dates of this show. I know it closes in March though. But be sure to go upstairs and check out the art done by Sunny B Rose and Dominique Barlow. <laughs> I see the spark in you. It's amazing. Hands up! Whatever you choose to do with it, you'll be great. <laughs>